it's good for putting yourself out there and making connections that might not have been possible if you hadn't had social media. You have to be very careful about what you post, what you write, what kind of photos you put out there because people judge very, very quickly. I post a lot and quite loudly and angrily. And also a lot of my business stuff happens on Facebook. Over email, over LinkedIn, the respect is definitely there. They automatically assume, okay, this guy's quite serious. He's got something serious to say. And then um, when we get to the meeting stage, there's always that, you can see it, there's always that instant, oh, you're actually quite young. I wasn't expecting that. When people meet me sometimes, I think they think I'm some sort of hard bastard. The sense of arrogance kind of can be betrayed in a lot of the photos that have been taken of me and, you know, this undesirable confidence, you know, and I think that when it comes down to it, I'm very down to earth, I'm an easygoing person. I think a lot of people tend to kind of judge you from what they can see in a photograph and have pre-judgments before they've even met you. When certain social media came out, it wasn't supposed to be a professional place like Facebook or Instagram. LinkedIn, definitely, but I think Facebook or Instagram is where employers will go to actually try and find out who you really are, and that's when your secrets will come out. I think that our digital presences are just as important as our physical presence. It's allowed me access to a virtual diaspora of people like me, where I can navigate through life with people who understand what my life is like. I use my Instagram to promote myself first as an um, actress, dancer and singer and then to show my friends where I am, what I'm doing, but just as, if it's something exciting. I think there's a lot of negatives about being um, a woman of colour online, about being, you know, particularly where the different types of your identity might intersect. Like if you happen to be LGBTQ or if you're larger or if you're non-neurotypical, for instance. You know, so there's plenty of reasons why it would be a difficult place to be, especially because there's a lot of people online who thrive on attacking you. I've got this one girl who relentlessly DMs me every day saying you're so ugly, you'll never be pretty. So I don't even block her because that gives them enough satisfaction from that, so I just leave it. I feel like I spend endless amounts of time arguing with people that I'll never come into contact with, but I'm too stubborn about it, so that takes a huge toll and it's a massive time drain. To be honest, I find it really hard to take even the compliments to heart because I know what I'm presenting is totally different to what they'd get if they just meet me in the first place. I'm quite open about how I feel online, but then also I'm in a lot of these closed, private, well, as private as they can be, spaces online too, where they collect um, like-minded people, where we know that we're safe, where we know that no one's screenshotting and taking it outside, where we know we share a common experience. I have someone who helps me with my messages because I get very stressed out if it's people who haven't seen work with people I know before. I like to work with people that, let's say mutual friends and stuff like that, so yeah, if it's someone totally new, I, I often don't actually handle the first conversations on it because I get very overwhelmed by it. Founder's depression is when you, you have an idea and you're pushing it and you're really trying to make it grow and things just constantly fall out of place. And it's really everyone else around you saying, oh, are you, are you still going to pursue this? They're all negative towards it. It makes you think, am I wasting my time? Is this, is this right? I'd say about 90% of the girls I've spoken to do have some experience with mental health issues, be it eating disorders or depression, anxiety, especially anxiety. A lot of the girls are very anxious, like we all go to places and end up having like panic attacks together somewhere. Like as cliche as it sounds, like yeah, everyone's very anxious. Because of where I'm at now and sort of what I've been reading and seeing, any sort of failure I have, I celebrate it as a success. It's something I've learned and I can push over. I think it's really important to love yourself and love the way you look and it's something I've been working on for a really long time like pictures that you take purely for yourself to like learn to love your own body and learn to appreciate yourself. For me I kind of worked a long time on the inside of myself rather than the outside because I think that whatever you see on the outside is not a fair portrayal. When I was younger I had some people not saying really good things about what I do, my photos. I think it's because I've chosen a different 
lifestyle if that makes sense so some people can agree with that and some people cannot but at the end of the day people talk every time so you just have to do what you want to do